Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the GSMPFS Core Dev Team Weekly of May 28, 2018. It is good to see everyone's faces again. It has been a couple of weeks since I was able to make to this call. Um, everyone is doing okay. Everyone had a nice weekend. We energ energized for the, the week. Awesome, I see thumbs up, that's good. Cool, all right, do we, before we start, do we have a note taker? Someone that would like to take notes. Someone that would like to, to write down like some keywords of what people say that are important to remember. Oh, we have one, thank you, Gonzalo. <laughs> Cool, so you have access to the clip tab. I'll post it here on the chat as well, just to make sure. Can you, can you share in the chat? Okay. There you go, can you, can you see it? Cool, so note taking for this call, it's more like people will go through their done, blocked, and, and, and next, and then for the questions is where we, when we take notes. And then also the note taker typically does a pull request to make sure that the notes get stored. Cool, okay, so we have a note taker, we are recording, we have everything we need, let's jump right into the week updates. I'll start with mine, and then we'll follow the order in the list. So from me, uh, basically I'm back to doing a lot of PR and merge and releases of stuff. I try to go through all of the things I was notified on today, and I believe I did all of them. Tell me if I missed any, or if there is any that I should be looking at that I was not pinged and therefore just at me on, on it. Um, during the morning, I, um, well, I prepared like this JSIP fast 0 to 9 release. There is the IOI section is now complete. I run all the tests, it's ready. Like we should be able to release Wednesday, finally. Uh, and, and we have so much stuff already on the pipeline for the next release, which means like we probably should be able to do another release even this month. Uh, and that is basically my, so like part of my to-dos for this week, it's 0 0.29 by Wednesday, if everything goes well. And then I want to enable the VHT by default, like, and just let, just let it fly in JSAPFS and I test it. Um, the JSAPFS network is a network. There's a lot of nodes connecting and, and we should start like actually testing the DHT, like our implementation, not just behind a flag. Uh, there is a DHT PR, which like basically plugs DHT into BitSwap and um, Unix FS engine. And I want to revive that one. It has been still for a while. So that's going to require a little bit of refactor. And also I want to go back to Leap Repair and finish one of my key results, which is like the, the newer, the refactor version of Leap Repair. This week I will focus on the config part. Any questions for me? Sounds good, no questions, perfect. By the way, thank you all. If you are in the US or in the UK, I know that's like an holiday, or if you are in the US and in the UK, you're not here, it's totally fair to enjoy your holiday. So <laughs> we'll, we'll get a bit late by text. Um, next up, we have Volker. Volker, wanna share that right. I forgot to thank everyone from the US in the previous meeting that they attended. Yeah, okay. So uh, the stuff I was working on, so last week there was the hack week and I spent most time on flow typing because there was Hugo also there. Um, so it was the perfect time to work on it. And because all the other stuff I should work on, I can also do on my own from home. <laughs> um, and I also did on the, like on the airport and train stations, I did um, I added a function that you can add custom codecs to, to JS multi codec. Uh, that's important so you can add your own formats to um, JS IPLD. Um, it's currently in review. Um, all right. And next, I probably will work on graph sync again, finish the flow tagging stuff. And just one more thing that I won't be available that much in the next two weeks. So it depends, it's between conferences and code sprints. So sometimes I might be check my email, sometimes I won't. 
Um, so just that everyone's aware of it, that if I don't reply immediately, I might not be available, but I try my best to be. Um, and I have a question. I also have a question to David before David gets his question. Um, when, um, so I created the pull requests on JS multi codec open, and I don't know, like uh, the maintainer, so should I, for review, always only add the maintainer, or should I also um, add you to such things, or what's the preferred way of doing it? So um, if there is a lead maintainer for the module, like feel free to just go ahead, review, like um, it should be very clear what are the expectations for what means to review as a lead maintainer, and what means to test, um, and what needs to happen when the release happens. Every limiter should have published right by now. If you don't, let me know. Um, and, and so you don't need me, except for JSIPFS. Like releasing JSIPFS is, and just like to peer, so the top level modules that I tech lead, uh, those I do prefer to still be around, just to be sure. Uh, also, because there is just like communicating to our users that happens like uh, behind the scenes, like there's a lot of emails back and forth like, notifying people. And so I like to be present just to make sure that like I get to push the new release to everyone. But uh, for all the other modules, just, just cover it. That, that's why we created the protocol. Um, given that you are limited availability and we are finishing the quarter, um, can, can you like focus solely on grassing? Like as in, I believe it's like the most important th thing. Do you agree? Yes, so I will, yeah, so I will work on the graphs and stuff, yeah. Yeah, I would say even before like flow typing or any other review or any other bug fix. Right. Awesome, thank you. Any other questions for Volker? No hands. Okay, next up we have Alan Cho who is enjoying his holiday. Um, and he has done a lot of stuff, as you can see here, uh, a lot of PRs for 029. He basically carried that one over the finish line. Um, did some bit swap things, finished the, um, the ping feature and fixed all the issues. There is a thing here where the Java IPFS API client calls the wrong HTTP endpoint. I actually don't know what's up with Java. I'll need to check this, what, what is happening with Java and why we are Caring. Um, and yeah, and so he's going to focus on pinning, which is a very big PR, and not just then. If you have questions for him, definitely reach out to IRC. You will be able to answer tomorrow. Uh, next up, we have Dimitri. Hey, guys. So uh, I've been working on the net traversal stuff. I got a, a basic implementation of a mapper that will use UPMP or NatPMP to create a, a port mapping. And next I'm planning on integrating it with the Diami protocol that will, um, based on that uh, mapping, request the other host to dial you back um, if circuit was used, and meaning that the direct connection was not, being, was not established. So if a circuit connection exists and we use it to create a connection and we have a net uh, mapping, we can ask the other uh, host on the other side to dial us back uh, using the, net, uh, the, the new uh, mapping. And I am going to be fo focusing on the uh, uh, dial me back protocol next and uh, polishing the uh, mapping manager um, this week as well. That's it. Oh, um, yeah. Do you have more stuff? I have a couple of questions. No, go ahead. So is there a spec for the dial me protocol? Is it I don't think there is. Yeah, I was, I was gonna create it. I was gonna work on it, uh, at least on an initial implementation. The thing is that without a dial me, uh, we can add a map in and just leave it there, but it's gonna be, um, it's not gonna be as useful as if we add, add it in tandem with the dial me protocol. I was thinking that it was probably going to be a very simple thing. Just send the new uh, IP and port to the other end and ask him to dial you back on, on, on those. 
Yeah, sounds good. Like, I think it's a clever idea. Something that I like, came up in conversations. I just want to make sure that the design is correct before we have code that they, there is no spec and then there is no cross implementation, right? Uh, we now have three implementations. It's not just. Yep. Um, I will. Also, go ahead. No, no. I, I was saying that I, I will write it down um, uh, and and have ask for feedback and and see. Um, what comes out of that. Sounds good. Like, remember, like even just opening an issue, describing what it is in a high level with a drawing of what you see that's working, like it, it's like 50% already. <laughs> like it, it already helps for the feedback. Same thing goes for the NAT traversal. I would like to understand where you are plugging that um, mm -hmm. because different NAT traversal mechanisms will need different features or different accesses to the peer to peer stack. So it's important that we make sure that the integration is nice so that we can use okay. more. Uh, do you need me to open up an issue and describe what what's going on, or do you want to just discuss so it in the PR? Or so the uh, not traversal, there is one issue. Like you can just like, drop notes there okay. for the dial me protocol. Um, definitely uh, do one that with peer to peer specs. Okay, cool. Sweet. Any more questions for Dimitri? So I'm always the one on one. Oh, is the same person asking the question? <laughs> um, cool, cool, all right. Vash. Hey guys, um, during the live and act week, I released the GS IPFS HTTP response and the service worker gateway, the initial release of both of them. Uh, I also uh, created uh, two pull requests for GS or IPFS or IO. One for integrating the service worker gateway and the other one for the deploy part. They are not merged yet. So I'm just waiting one for Victor to check if it's okay, everything with the Jenkins. Um, and next, for the next week, I've already started today uh, working in the um, stats page of the service worker gateway. Uh, and I want to also for this week uh, guarantee that the GSRPFS or IO as the service worker live, uh, as well as uh, integrating the GS IPFS HTTP response with the GS IPFS. Now it is only with the service worker gateway. And uh, I also want to, as a lead maintainer, go through the GS IPFS DCTL issues and PRs. I have several <laughs> ones to, to look. Last week, I didn't have time to go through them. I will go this week. And uh, that's it for me. Sounds good. Um, yeah, very exciting stuff with the service worker, and I'm looking forward to see that on the Jessica Professor EO webpage. I think it's going to blow people's minds. Uh, definitely like stress tested. Like, you, you want to pass some, like, I don't know, some big files through there. I know that Ugo is going to focus a lot on, on like stress testing Jessica Professor, but also make sure that like the service worker, like the, that, that thing, also behaves well when, when in conjunction with just IPFS. Um, or yes, uh, if it breaks, if it breaks, it should be have like a nice error page saying, hey, sorry about that, like it's still alpha. <laughs> Try again, right? Like it should not like just like blow in people's faces. That's what I'm afraid of. Yes, uh, I've not tried with really large files, but uh, I, will I will test it uh, this week as well. Sounds good, thank you. Any other questions for Vashk? All right, cool. Next up we have Diogo. File system Diogo. So guys, uh, last week I've been on Lisbon Hack Week and I've been working on finishing, finishing finally the files exchange example. There's an open PR and uh, I'm waiting for some review. I think it's all, all, uh, almost close to be merged. Uh, the video said you were looking for, was, was waiting for the review from Alan Shaw. He's going to be away or we don't know. Uh, it's coming back tomorrow. It's coming back tomorrow. It's just like an holiday okay. today in the UK. Like it's the bank. Oh, okay. I didn't know if he was going to be away for, for the rest of the week or something like that. So we'll, We'll wait for him to review it. And uh, this week, and probably in the next weeks, I'll be improving JSRPFS uh, error handling. 
uh, in the Lisbon Hack Week, I've been talking with Victor and we've got a plan how to start doing that. I'll open an awesome endeavor, a new issue with the, the steps necessary to, to solve that. And yeah, that's what I'm going to work on. I think like there, it's really about like creating this the, the test suite that gives you the errors. Like otherwise, like if we start doing a lot of refactoring, trying to guess where the errors are coming from, it's still good because we have some good intuition, but like it's not going to be reliable. Like we might just break things again. And so um, Victor already has a setup to deploy just FPS as a gateway. Uh, he, he claims like every time he does that, like it, it crashes a couple of days after. So, so like let's let's isolate what makes it crash, and like make it repeatable, so that when things change, like we, we know we are in the right direction. Does 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 that like align with the plan that you have, Diego? Or mm, uh, not really, I think. The, we we were talking about uh, you 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 said that we could write trash in in various levels of the stack, so we could see where the demon would crash, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But now you're you're talking about creating a test suit. So the the when the demon crashes is due to a reason, right? Or you are piping like trash to like it's in like open ports, or like it's just handling a large file, or it just like just has too many connections open, and so there's like multiple attack vectors to, to like make the process crash. And, and what I'm saying is like in order for to fix those things, you have to make those repeatable. Like you have to have some script. It doesn't have to be like a full fledged test suite. You have to have some like even if it's just a, a manual script, like it can be repeatable so that you can then test. Ideally it should be automated. Like it should be something that you run and if the, the error handling is correct, um, then it passes the test. If it's not, then it crashes. Mm. Okay. I'm not really sure how to tackle that, but I have to think on it. Okay. I think there's a lot of comments on the issue for, for this thing. I can also read that again and just like post more feedback there if that helps you. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Sounds good. Cool. Thank you. Any other questions for Diogo? I don't see hands. Cool. Uh, Ugo. Hi. So uh, last week I also was in Lisbon Act Week. Uh, I was able to finish up all the browser focused improvements on Azure with the help of Victor. Um, the pull request is almost done. I think Victor had a, a couple of last minute uh, comments, which should be the last ones. And it should be uh, merged this week. Also, I was uh, able to add um, for flowing basically with the help of uh, Fokker. And next week, or this week, I will be finishing up all the, uh, the test bed with all the input I gathered during last week. Um, and I already started setting up uh, a nice repo to and integrating all the changes I, I made to the to Azure, so I can I'm able to break point and play with the profiling in the tools. So I, I have all, all the, the tools I need to uh, finish my OKRs regarding big files and connections. That's basically it. Uh, also, uh, I mean, uh, I think we we talked like for a second that you thought I was already like a maintainer for some repos, but then I said to you that. Uh, I am not, so I don't know if you missed some sign or not. So. I, I was actually reviewing the, the list of repos. Like there is some repos that have a maintainer, but the, it hasn't been updated yet. There is one which like, um, well, Pedro kind of like ended off that to you, like the connection manager, manager thing. And so I feel like you should be like owning that. At the same time, I know that like you're not focused on that right now. So I, I wanted to check in with you, uh, perhaps like asynchronously, not here. Like if you if you are still have the availability to tackle that. 
on on the remaining do yeah super cool that like now the tooling works and that we will have that like very uh, intense test that's just a test um do do you have any intuition of like how long will it take to create that harness to test um like to to stress test just a pfs versus how much time you will have left to actually do the debugging the, right now the, i'm guessing during this week uh, i'll be able to do at least to set up everything uh, i'm thinking about like three or four um like examples that I want to to build inside one repo uh, and have everything set up so I can run it uh, multiple times um, and identify the the bottlenecks. So I think one week probably a little bit more, but I think it will it will not be much uh, more than that. Like week week and a half to set up all the all the tests. Uh, and after that, I'll be uh, opening up all requests to fix stuff already to improve to improve things. Sounds good. That's great. That's great to hear. Um, one more question or ask. You showed last week when you upgraded all the tooling, um, like you showed like the diagram of all of the package sizes, like on the bundle. Uh, I think that was a really nice visualization. Uh, I was familiar with Diskify. Um, but like both work for me. Like I just want that to be more available to developers. Like if you can make that like part of like the NPM scripts, like just, just getting to that page, I think it would be useful for a lot of people to really understand like how much, uh, how heavy it is each package right now. Yeah, uh, on the, the issue uh, I created on Azure uh, in the awesome endeavor that where the, I have all the stuff, all the ideas I initially had to improve. Uh, one of the items, exactly uh, that one, and also um, like a, um, a little script that you run every every time you, you do a, a build, and it's like a test. If you, you, you give it a, a threshold, like uh, two megabytes, and if you your bundle goes up, that threshold, it, uh, it gives you a warning or something, so you know each, each time you do a release or a build that you are going over some defined threshold where we actually want the, like the IPFS bundle to be, uh, and also has that source map explorer that you saw. Uh, but basically, I will work on that uh, when I have more time. Right now, I just want to get the test bed running uh, because it, that's the main goal. But I will not forget about it. It's it's on already on, a, on an issue. Sweet, thank you. Any other questions for Hugo from anyone? Uh, all right, so last but not the least, Machi. Um, so I have removed this uh, feature or rather this bug in uh, Lippity P switch that uh, the node could dial itself and I fixed some typos in Lippity P circuit which uh, still aren't merged which is uh, kind of weird considering it's just uh, one change. <laughs> um, and I also worked uh, a bit on node trust. Now the DNS records can be changed uh, remotely uh, that will allow me to add tests and eventually make this a real lippdp module that's uh, publicly supported or something like that um, uh, do you have any questions for me or uh, that sounds good and so thank you so much for fixing that those issues on switch and the typos on circuit um yeah it'll be exciting to see another demo like as you progress like i think you always do cool demos uh, of like the, the thing working and so if either in the ipfs i'll end or even if you just want to record a video of like the uses of node trust and now it is set up i think it'd be very useful to show to other people but i just don't know what to demo because it's basically the same thing just a bunch of output and then it connects over https and that's every demo ever 
well, but you have been improving your explanation on why it's important. That's why, why I'm saying it's always useful to, to have a demo. Okay, I will do that. But, um, but I saw also on the other uh, weekly that you were looking for more issues to work on. Um, let me know if you still need help on like identifying more things to like from the pile of issues that we have already um, to hack on. I, we can like jump on a call maybe tomorrow or Wednesday and just like go through a lot of things that might be exciting for you. Mm, yes, uh, maybe I should also sh uh, schedule a call for that. Yeah, yeah. If you just like pick 15 minutes or 30, like then we can go through that. Cool. Any questions for Machi? I don't see any. Cool. We have two minutes left. Let's go through the questions very, very quick so that we don't steal anyone's time. Uh, question number one, which I captured from the last meeting recording, uh, why we don't have 1.0.0 modules. And it was said during the last call, which is kind of incorrect. It's not because we are not feature complete. It's because IPFS is alpha. IPFS is alpha software right now. We haven't really moved to beta. Um, the Go IPFS that is a reference implementation is 0 0.4, so it's, a, it's still in a minor version, same as just IPFS. We, we just are more advanced minor version. And um, there is actually a very interesting reading that I recommend you checking. It's one of Jay Bennett's random ideas. Um, and it's about like this problem with Silver where Semver should have like four, a fourth element, which is for vanity. Like you should be able to say, oh, this is alpha, this is beta, this is like IPFS one, this is IPFS two, and then have the developer version, which is kind of like Chrome does, but because of the way that Go packaging and uh, JS packaging works, we don't have access to that. And so we keep IPFS under 1.0 so that people don't um, fall into the mistake of uh, thinking that we are claiming that IPFS is fully ready and like security audited and like super stable and so on. Like it would be very unfortunate to uh, arrive at IPFS released, like the first version of IPFS with IPFS, just IPFS version like 99, right? Like um, it, it is because of that. Like it's not because we are not feature priority or something. Um, if you want to, understand how to get to beta and then to alpha. There's like some discussions on github.com IPFS slash IPFS. Was it clear? Was this helpful? Like given the confusion last week? All right, cool. Uh, next up, we have two questions from Machi. Machi, can you do it like in super quick? Um, so first thing is WebSocket star. Um, I think that it was discussed that this module should be uh, deprecated uh, and that was like half a year ago and now that thing should be already dead and uh, I think it's more of a zombie right now and I don't know if I sh should still do anything about this module or if we should just um, let it die in silence or something like that. Um, I don't think it should die. It's still a valid transport. It works, like it does its thing. Like it fits certain specific scenarios. Uh, it's um, a very easy way to spawn like a local network. But, uh, I hear I heard that uh, it's going to be replaced by a PDP circuit based solution and that will use the uh, rendezvous protocol. True, and totally. Because like we also want that to be the solution. Like we want to route every traffic from through a peer to peer. That said, there there has to be a migration path. Like you cannot just drop one thing one day and then like wait for the next solution to come. You have to have the next solution and then having them working together and like migrate everyone and convince everyone that like this new solution is the best one. And once uh, once that new solution is fully adopted, then we can consider turning off our signaling, like our rendezvous endpoint. Um, but until then, it's good to continue maintaining it. Like people are, w people are relying on it for demos, for prototypes, and so on. So there is users, right? Like you, we should not not drop it essentially. And the second thing is, um, I hear that the public gateway is crashing often, and um, there is the software that I use uh, also in LibPDP No Trust on the website that basically. Um, reports errors automatically and if that might be useful we thank you like we have used sentry for other services i actually don't know what the infrastructure team is using right now i know that we have grafana just like to see the uptime and other like stats from the nodes um definitely this is a thing to check in with victor and lars 
So uh, should I create an issue about this in the infrastructure repo? Yeah, exactly. Uh, it might be documented. Definitely read the docs first because it might be documented what they are using already. Mm, okay, will do. Thank you. All right, so last item, because we are already over. Um, so um, I've noticed that the number of issues on inbox keeps increasing, like the um, on the waffle boards. And by the way, all the waffle boards are synchronized. So if you move one issue from inbox already, I can do a move in other ones because it synchronizes two levels, which is kind of cool. Uh, and so what I want to ask you um, is, please do like tag issues and move them to ready or to backlog um, if they are ready to be worked on or not or blocked on something and like do it like just just follow the lead maintainer kind of protocol and like definitely like spend a little bit of time like 10 minutes a day of just like creating curating your issues because it helps a lot for new contributors right now we have a pile of things that we don't know the difficulty we don't know the priority we don't know if they are good for, for, for new contributors or not and so um, yeah like can can I get everyone to commit like ten minutes every day, just like to go through issues this week, so that like next week we have like inbox zero on the waffle. Is it good? Okay, I see some hands. Google is like, ah, I don't know. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. All right, all right. That's like my remark. I don't. I want to take more of your time. Thank you so much for the updates. It seems like a lot of things are going on, like a lot of things are blending, which is like nice from like end of the quarter. There's people with demos, there's like more demos for the next LNs. Um, there's like releases, like there's features on the pipeline to, for the next release already. So lots of exciting stuff. Um, thank you so much for your time. Does everyone feel confident that they know what to do this week? All right, all right. Cool. Any other what, any last remarks? All, all good? Okay, cool. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. It was great to chat with y'all. And see you again next week or chat through the GitHubs and RCs. Bye. 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 Bye.